with this video, I want to show you how you can use REST Assured for testing your Spring Boot applications. So REST Assured is a, a Java DSL for testing uh, REST services or HTTP endpoints in general. You can use it for testing any of your Java projects. So it's not um, built for Spring Boot specifically, but it comes with a nice um, Spring Mock MVC integration, which we will see later on. So with REST Assured, we can uh, write our tests or our assertions for our REST APIs in a fluent BDD manner. So you will see here, it follows the given when then setup. So this helps us to write um, nicely readable and concise uh, tests for our HTTP endpoints. It also comes with great support for asserting uh, JSON results or XML and also comes with a set of um, authentication mechanisms we can configure later on to also test secured endpoints. I've already prepared a sample Spring Boot application. So this application has one controller to retrieve information about books. So we will have uh, one endpoint here that returns a list of books. So we can further specify the amount here. So by default, it returns 500 books unless we specify a different amount. Then there is an endpoint to retrieve a book by its ID. And then last but not least, we can also create new books uh, when using this post endpoint and pass a valid book request. So to create a new book, it only takes three attributes for our application here. So a not empty title, a not empty ISBN, and also an author. And all of this we now want to test with uh, REST Assured. So as a first step, we have to include the REST Assured dependency to our project. I'm using a Maven for the sample project, so therefore we can go to our POM XML. And then here, right next to our other test dependencies, uh, we can add a new dependency. And this one is called Spring Mock MVC coming from io.rest-assured. So with this in place, we can save it and then reload our Maven changes. Another important thing, we can add the scope test here. So it won't be part of our production jar file as it's only uh, for testing purposes. So even though we don't specify a version here, Maven doesn't complain and it seems um, it included this rest assured dependency to our project. The reason for this is that as we are using Spring Boot, the Spring Boot parent POM actually manages the version of REST Assured for us. So we can also see this if we take a look at the Maven view of IntelliJ. And here on the right side, um, we will see it already picked a version uh, for us. So here it's 3.3.0 without us ever specifying a version here. So that's because the Spring Boot parent has a version defined for REST Assured dependencies. As this is not the recent one, or in case you want to use a specific version, we can easily overwrite this. So therefore go to the Properties section and then overwrite the REST Assured version with this property field. So as of, at the time of recording, this is the recent version of REST Assured. When specifying this here and then reloading the changes, we will then see here on the right side, we are now using the correct REST Assured version. So this Spring Mock MVC dependency also has a transitive dependency to the, the core module of REST Assured. So for us, it's enough to only include the Mock MVC dependency. There's one final pitfall when integrating REST Assured and updating the version manually. So if we take a closer look at the dependencies it includes and take a look at what uh, the REST Assured core dependency is dependent on, we will see here it's depending on Groovy. So parts of REST Assured are written in Groovy. Similar to REST Assured, Spring Boot also manages the Groovy version for us by default. Because of this, we also have to make sure that we align the Groovy version with the REST Assured version we are using. Because right now, if we would use this setup, it would fail 
with some uh, weird groovy exceptions because it can't find some uh, methods or properties of specific groovy classes. So that's why when manually increasing and taking care of managed versions with Spring Boot, also make sure to override the groovy version here. So therefore we can also specify another property inside our POM XML called groovy.version. And in this example, uh, let's bump it to version 3.0.7 and then load the Maven changes. And then we will see here on the right internally, it will now use the specified Groovy version for rest assured. In case you're wondering which Groovy version to use, you can always take a look at the POM of rest assured and then scroll down. And then inside the properties here, you will see which Groovy version it defines. And also here, it specifies a range of uh, valid Groovy version that this version of Rest Assured can work with. So that's an important uh, thing to mention when including Rest Assured to a Spring Boot project. And next, we can start with our first test. So therefore, let's go to our book controller and then create our first test. As we have included the um, mock MVC support of REST Assured, we can now use it when writing tests for our controller classes with at web MVC test. So at web MVC test will create a sliced uh, spring test context for us, which only contains the relevant beans to test our controller endpoints. And as part of the at web MVC test annotation, Spring Boot will also auto configure a mock MVC instance for us that we will use in a second. So first we will make sure that we will only test one book controller. So by passing book controller dot class to the at web MVC test annotation, the test context will only contain the book controller. We could also just use at web MVC test and don't specify which a controller we want to test. In this case, Spring Boot would create a test context for us that contains all our controllers. The downside of this approach is that we would then have to satisfy all the injected beans of all our controllers. So we would have to provide either a real implementation of them or mock them all. So this might result into a lot of mock beans for our test. So that's why it makes sense to narrow down the test setup and only include one controller for this web MVC test. So in this case, we only have to mock one bean in this example, which is the book service. So as the book controller here injects with its public constructor, a bean of type book service with our web MVC test, we won't actually populate any at service or component or repository classes. And without this mock bean, the context wouldn't be able to load because the book controller depends on one book service. And with the add mock bean, we simply put a mocked version of our book service into our uh, spring test context. Next, we can inject the mock MVC instance. So with at web MVC test, we don't have to populate mock MVC on our own as Spring Boot auto configures a mock MVC instance for us. What's next is to instruct rest assured to target mock MVC. Therefore, we can use the lifecycle method before each of JUnit Jupyter to perform the setup. And here we can use rest assured mock MVC and then the static method mock MVC and pass the instance that we inject here. And with this setup, we instruct rest assured to now target a mock MVC. So a mocked servlet environment with a mock MVC, we actually don't start on a local port and don't start the Tomcat uh, server at all. So it's rather a mocked environment where we can easily test our Spring MVC controllers. So let's start with the first test. As a first test, I want to ensure that we can retrieve books without authentication. So one thing I have not mentioned yet is that our project also uses Spring Security to protect um, its endpoints. So by default, the get endpoints to slash API slash books 
are available without authentication. On the other side, the endpoint to create new books, which is the post endpoint slash API slash books, actually requires authentication and also um, only users with the role admin are allowed to create books. So this we will also make sure to test with rest assured. But with the first test, we want to ensure that one of the get endpoints is uh, available without authentication. So as we mocked our book service, we have to instruct its behavior as it will return null otherwise. So therefore we can use Mokito to stop our mock. So as we are going to test the endpoint to retrieve a list of books, internally the get all books method will be used. And here we have to specify when it will be invoked with a specific amount, what it should return. So here we can specify 42 as we will use 42 as an amount in a second. And then our book service should return a list of books. So actually I won't return 42 books here, but let's say we want to return a list of just one book. So this book here, rest assured with Spring Boot by the author Duke, also with the ID 42, will be returned whenever the get all books method is called on our book service and 42 is passed. In case we pass any other amount than 42, the get all books uh, will return an empty list as we didn't specify its behavior and it will then fall back to its uh, default behavior. So that's important to mention in case you're wondering why your mock is returning something different than you expect. Most of the time it's because the stubbing setup um, is wrong or not matching your actual test case. To now use rest assured to invoke our endpoint, we can again use the rest assured mock MBC and now start with given. With given, we provide the request specification. And as a first step, we can say uh, for the authentication, we don't want any. So here with auth none, we specify to not attach any authentication. So also there wouldn't be any authentication by default, but that's a little bit more explicit and helps us understand the test case. Next, um, we will add a query parameter, which is the amount. And here we now specify 42. So this will be then added to our URL path. And the actual URL we want to target uh, is specified as part of the when step. So with when, we now specify the HTTP method. So in our example, it's get. And we are going to invoke slash API slash books. So with this, we specify what to invoke and also additional attributes as part of the given step. We can also add further headers, for example, in case we have some custom headers or want to test the content negotiation to ensure our API is able to return uh, different content types. We could tweak the headers here. For our test case, we don't need any header. What's now left is the then part. And with then, we then specify the validations for our test case. So the first thing we want to make sure is the status code. So here we are expecting HTTP status code 200 as this endpoint should be available to everybody without authentication. To validate our response body, we can specify a JSON path expression. So here don't get confused with the JSON path of JWay. That's actually a different JSON path. So rest assured ships with its own JSON path that we can use to validate our JSON payloads. So the first test, let's ensure the size of, an, of our array. So as our book controller will return a list of books, we can check for the size of our JSON array. As a second argument, rest assured expects here a Hamcrest matcher. So here we can specify that we are expecting the size to be equal to one. So as our mocking setup only returns a list of one book, we should also only return one book. As a next step, we can also inspect other attributes of our response. So this also acts as a small contract test. So here, for example, we can ensure that our first element of the response has an ID field, which is equal to 42. So this should be here the primary key of our book. 
let's add an expectation for all our uh, JSON attributes. Next, we are expecting the ISBN to be 42, but this time it should be a string. And then also the author. So here it should be Duke. And then last but not least, uh, the title of our book is also something we can write an expectation for. And here it's this rest assured with Spring Boot. If we now save this and run our test, we will now see here a successful test case and could write our first rest assured test using its mock MBC integration to test a Spring MBC endpoint.